Hey, I'm Harlem Pelanquist and this is uh, Chris Dangereux. And you're watching those.ca. Hey, I'm Heather Adler from Dose.ca. We're sitting down with The Hives. You guys are, have a brand new album that's about to come out, the Black and White album. Mm -hmm. And I know you guys really brought back the riff rock on this one. You're going for the old-timey kind of hook rock and roll. Was that something that you sort of thought was missing in music these days? Yeah, it's been missing for a long time. And I don't think anybody's really ever trying to do it properly. But it's... There's that, and there's a bunch of other stuff on the record, too, that's kind of far removed from riff rock. But, but yeah, there's definitely a lot of that going on. Yeah, and I know you guys were rationalizing that since the White Album by the Beatles sold 11 million copies and the Black Album by Metallica sold 17 million, that your album should probably sell somewhere in the neighborhood of 176 million? Yeah, we multiplied 11 and 17. Yeah, yeah so does this mean that you'll also be bigger than not just Jesus, but God, perhaps, if you uh, sign them? No, I think God could sell as many albums as he wanted to. But the, our advantage is that we know that we exist. Mm -hmm. We're not sure about God. Mm -hmm. We haven't decided that yet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's our plan, at least. Sometimes we sell less records than we think we're going to sell, but I think this time we might, we might may very well do it. <laughs> awesome. Now you guys worked with some really interesting people on this album. I know you hadn't really worked with producers in the past, but you brought Pharrell Williams on here, as well as mm -hmm. some other people. What was it like having that sort of outside influence when you were going in for this record? It was interesting. I mean, we we decided to actually, I mean, if we're going to work with other people, we might as well listen to what they have to say. Otherwise, we might as well do it ourselves. So, it was really fun working with Pharrell because it was a completely different process than our usual process. And I think that was more, more what we needed than actually working with producers. We just needed to do it in a different way. Mm -hmm. And he was really helpful in that. And I read you guys too were just sort of trying to go for a fun vibe this time, not trying to dissect and have such a clear vision, but just sort of throwing ideas at the wall and seeing what stuck. Were you having a good time? You just make story? a lot of music and yeah. make an record out of that instead of like being very meticulous with every song and just putting those on the records. It seemed like it was time for us to kind of let loose and just make music and then make a record out of that. Yeah, it's, it's been great. It's been one of the most fun sort of recordings we've done, I think. And just, just the fact that we recorded with so many different people in, in different countries and stuff made it I mean, it's, it's a very fun and educational thing to do mm -hmm. in, in a lot of ways, so that's it's been great, I think. I know you guys also did a song with Timbaland that didn't end up making it on the record. Are we ever going to get to hear that one? I don't know. Depends on when he finishes it. Oh, it's not done? Yeah, I mean, we, we did our part. It's him doing his part now. I don't know what's going to come out of it. We didn't have time to put it on the record, but it's fun to do. Yeah, what's the song like? There are several, there's four songs actually, but none of them are absolutely finished, so it's kind of hard to say what they're like. Yeah. They're all different. Yeah, yeah. Well, you guys are actually awesome. three, because one, one of the songs we worked on was Giddy Up, but then we re-recorded it ourselves for this record. Yeah. So it would have time to come out. You guys are also really well known for your live show, you for climbing all over the place, getting into the crowd, like really being involved at the live show. Has that ever resulted in any kind of injury for you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> But uh, it did for Iggy too, mm. and he seems, I don't know, fine, but he seems all right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, that's kind of what, it's way, just way too much fun to kind of try to avoid being hurt. Yeah, so what have been some of your biggest incidents? A dislocated shoulder maybe, hurt my knees a million times. My knees are full of cartilage and shit because I hurt <laughs> them so many times. I don't know, it's usually not one big damage kind of. Mm -hmm. We did a live DVD called Tussles in Brussels where I jump and I land with my, my shins on the barrier. My legs up, but you can't really tell from watching the DVD because I'm such a trooper and the show must go on. Yeah. <laughs> Is that why you got to wear black to make sure the blood stains don't come through? Yeah, white would have been worse. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Is it ever hard when you get off the stage to you know, go back to being just a regular guy and not to be the Howlin' Powell? No, I, I haven't played a show since the last time I slept. Yeah. So now it's easy. But after the show, it's really hard to unwind and relax. Yeah. Is there one that you think is more yourself, like the, the stage you where you're just completely going nuts or the you that's sort of quieter? And yeah, the stage me, I think. Yeah. My vote is for the stage me. <laughs> but I just can't, you know, I can't run around and jump off of things here all the time. Because mm -hmm. I'd be too tired when it came to time to play a show. <laughs> 
You guys are playing with Maroon 5 uh, on a lot of this tour now. I heard uh, recently one of their shows, Paris Hilton, popped up. Have you guys had any good gossip with the guys in Maroon 5 yet? No. Uh, really. I haven't seen anybody famous apart from the guys in that band. <laughs> no, but they're really nice guys though, so and they're pretty famous. So. <laughs> We were pretty famous too, if you hadn't noticed. Mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. But no, I didn't see no Paris Hilton. <laughs> well, you guys have gotten to a certain level of fame now where you're in sort of the award show circuit and uh, these kind of people are in sort of your atmosphere. What's the weirdest celebrity encounter you've, you've ever had? The, I think it was the VMAs or something when Outcast were being interviewed on the balcony. And when they saw us coming, they almost jumped off the balcony and said, so we were happy to see us. Yeah, that was and the we first were, time we met. We were really happy to see them as well. So. It's the first time we met Outcast. Yeah. And a lifelong love story has evolved since. Are you guys still the boat working together? And Dr. Matt was also in an incident with Eminem's security people. That was funny. Yeah, and Justin Timberlake's security yeah. people. Yeah. He seems to have a big problem with security people. Is he trying to get a little too close to Justin yeah, Timberlake? He who it is, you know, yeah. if he wants to go somewhere, he just walks. <laughs> yeah, I think that's like more it. I don't think he even knows who Justin Timberlake or Eminem are. <laughs> <laughs> that knows enough to care, at least. Yeah. Well, I mean, you guys are also very dapper band. You're always dressed well. You're you're well groomed. You have well, you. the um, the eccentric manager who discovered you and put you all together. What is it that differentiates you guys from being a boy band at this point, Della Justin Timberlake? Uh, the music being very <laughs> different, I would say. <laughs> Apart from that, you know, uh, I mean, it's I pretty obviously think not. I think the fact that our music is not made to really appeal to anybody but ourselves. Yeah. Whereas boy band music is strategically kind of done to appeal to teenage girls. <laughs> we just appeal to teenage girls, you know, out of a coincidence. Right. Right. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for your time, guys. Well, Have thank you. Thank thanks. You. It's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure. Bye-bye, <laughs> viewers.